Hi, my name is Josephine and these are my creatures. Welcome back to my Celestial Goddess series, where I make dolls inspired by the planets of our solar system. So far, we have done Moon, Sun, Mercury, Venus, Mars, and next is Jupiter. Jupiter is the largest planet in our solar system. In my Earth video, some of you guys suggested that I could use a 17-inch Monster High doll. I thought about it too, but I think it would make photographing the group difficult. And I don't think the skinny and lanky proportions of Monster High dolls will work with the presence and mass that Jupiter has. Did you know that you could fit 1,300 Earths inside of Jupiter. The scale of this planet is absolutely crazy. I would have to make the doll the size of this room to be even close to Jupiter's real proportions. I still wanted this character to be the tallest and biggest out of the bunch. So it's hybrid time, baby! This LOL OMG ferocious doll will make a nice base for larger hips and thighs, and to make sure she will still fit within the group, let's give her a monster high head. I have not used a Claudine head in this series yet, so she seemed like a good fit skin tone and face sculpt wise. I removed Claudine's hair with my scissors, and her face needs to go too. Acetone will make quick work removing it. I remove both of the doll's heads after heating them up with some hot water. I will save the LOL earring for later. I quite like it. I get rid of the stubble through the neck hole. Claudine's wolf ears got to go too. This character is not going to be quite that ferocious. I make markings where I want to saw the doll in half. Like the doll plastic surgeon that I am. A knife will make good progress on the soft vinyl thighs. For the arms, I used pliers, but the torso and neck need to be sawed in half with my Dremel tool. I hope no one takes what I'm saying out of context. I sound like a real serial killer. Here are all the parts I need to Frankenstein back together. We have Claudine's head and neck with the LOL torso. I kept Claudine's arms at this point, but we'll be swapping them back later on to the LOL ones because the joints are a bit bigger. Claudine's long legs will help give my doll more height and posability, even though I wish the knee joints were a bit bigger. As long as making the doll bigger overall, I need to make her taller as well, so every piece gets a wire connection. I fill the empty spots with hot glue and tinfoil to save on clay and not to make her too heavy in the end. This step is quite fun and chaotic. I try to bog up her frame as much as possible to make the later steps easier on me. Once I'm happy with the base layer, I start mixing my magic sculpt clay. This will be the final material. I work in sections because once you mix the clay, it will start curing and you have about an hour to three hours of working time, depending on the temperature and level of detail you want to do. There is really no way of explaining what I'm doing. I just grab a blob of clay and flatten shape and mold it to what I feel would work and looks correct to my eyes. I try to keep the left and right even by adding the same amount of clay to each side. I swap to the arms here I also didn't want to use Claudine's gloved hand. Luckily, the LOL doll had the hand that I needed. The arms were a bit fiddly, but once the clay cures, everything is rock solid. She is getting big boobs, wide hips, and a belly too. I wanted to do this hybrid because I was so inspired by Hexgen's custom Lizzo doll. I kept shaping the clay with my X-Acto knife to get rid of the biggest bumps before I sanded everything as smooth as I could. The hand sanding was getting me nowhere on her legs, so I got out the big guns. To fill in the stubborn divots that remained after sanding, I used drywall spackle that is way easier to sand. 
First layer of paint is white gesso tinted brown to help the rest of the paint job to really stick to the door's surface. I did three initial coats of paint and each time I managed to mix a slightly different shade of brown. Along with Jupiter's enormous size, the planet's most defining feature is in its patterns. The swirls of browns and whites are actually not landmarks. Jupiter is a massive gas giant. These are different compounds in their gas form swirling in high-speed winds in Jupiter's atmosphere. The white markings are clouds made of water and ammonia. Isn't that wild? Clouds made of ammonia. There is also little to no oxygen in Jupiter's atmosphere. Most of it is formed out of helium and hydrogen. So it only made sense to try and marble some acrylics to create a very unique skin tone for her. I tried not to try too hard and let the paint do its thing, but I do have to admit it was quite difficult to resist the urge to correct things and finesse with the paints. It looks super easy on camera, but because the doll's body is curved and not a flat canvas, every time I had something that I liked, it sort of slided off of the doll's body. Very frustrating! But I finally had something I was mostly happy about, so I sealed it with matte varnish. Before I could marble her face, I needed to give her hair first. I went with this natural colored yarn that I had left. I thought dreadlocks would add a nice variety in hair textures in my group of dolls, because my goal is to be as inclusive as I can in this series. Yarn makes the most believable dreadlocks in doll scale. I had just enough yarn left to do her hairline and a little extra. So I need to give her an updo to hide her balding head. A twisted top bun seemed like the most appropriate hairdo. Then it was time to marble her face. I added a touch of color shifting paint here and there to give her the ethereal touch of a celestial goddess. I have a limited selection of colors in my specialty finish paints. In an ideal world, I would have chosen something else, but this minty teal to purple works well enough. A cling film turban will protect the hair from the sealant while I work on her face. Like always, I start with pan pastels. I then add her eye whites with my journal's chalk pencil in white. I definitely need a new one soon. Look how tiny this one has gotten over the years. Speaking of years, I have been posting videos for years now and I would really like my channel to grow. Please consider subscribing, I would very much appreciate it. Plus, we are so close to hitting 30,000. Then I detail her eyes and eyebrows. I like to use a red pencil for the waterline. She will have brown eyes, I really want to stick with the neutral colors of the planet. And I think dark eyes will give her a wise look. A layer of pearlex powders will give her a glow worthy of a goddess. I added a new layer of sealant but forgot to record that. But I just built up all the existing colors before adding a layer of color shifting paint to her lips in the color Psychotic Illusions. I keep building and layering colors as needed, mostly on her eyes, but also on her lips and eyebrows. The eyebrows had a hard time showing up on her skin tone, so I used a light grey pencil to add some detail to them. Then I wanted to add the symbol of Jupiter on her face. I mapped out where I would have space for it but her headdress made her forehead too crowded. The symbol ended up on her cheek instead. 
I wanted her to have a more mysterious vibe to her, so I experimented with adding a lightning streak to her left eye. Jupiter was Roman's counterpart for Zeus, so lightning symbols are also associated with Jupiter. I committed to my sketch with white acrylic paint. There is no going back after this. While I had the white paint out, I added catch lights to her eyes. Some bronze paint for eyeshadow and nail polish before I sealed her again using my Mr. Super Clear spray. The lips get a final coat of that color shifting paint and the eyes get a clear coat to really make the colors pop. I release her from her plastic turban. Here's the headdress I showed earlier. I made it out of an earring. It's quite simple but effective. I just poke it into her head with a needle. Then it's time for some clothes. I often sketch out roughly what I want the outfit to look like, and I had in mind to make a skirt and a coat. The skirt looked better in my head and my drawing than what it did on the doll, so in the end I ended up scrapping it. So I think we can skip making it a bit and move on to her coat. I like the dramaticness a coat or a cape adds to my dolls, but I do think this is enough of coats, because three dolls already have it, Mercury, Moon and now Jupiter. So I need to explore some outfit ideas for the rest of the dolls. If you have any ideas for the remaining dolls, that are going to be Saturn, Uranus, Neptune and Pluto, please leave them down below. After I had patterned the coat and cut out all the pieces, I needed to heat seal the edges, although undeniably pretty, was very prone to fraying. I started with the front panels, but I didn't like how poofy they ended up being. I recut the front panels to be smaller, and that seemed to fix the problem. I sewed the shoulder seams, side seams and closed the sleeves before I could attach them to the body's piece. I used a paintbrush inside the sleeve to be able to sew it on by hand. The edges of the coat needed some detail to them, so I used the same technique I did on my reindeer Christmas video a few years back. Obviously, to everyone except me, the trim ended up looking a bit too Christmassy with the gold color, and the last time I used this technique was in a Christmas video. So, no wonder. So, I ended up treating this as a base layer and went in by hand and embroidered these cloud like shapes to the coat's edge. The coat still felt a bit plain, so I grabbed my white paint and went to town adding dots all around the border. I would like to say I made 79 dots exactly, because that would match how many moons Jupiter has. But I was too lazy for that. But we can pretend there is 79 dots on the dress, right? The dots on their own felt a bit too Christmassy to me, so I added some lightning patterns. This will also help tie in her face marking. I gave her stacks of jewelry from my jump ring box. I personally don't mind mixing metals, and I didn't have platinum jump rings, so the silver ones actually matched the best. For her other accessories, I just grabbed a random pair of shoes from my stock bin and painted them with the same colors I had already used on the doll. I gave her a quick top out of brown stretchy fabric. I put all her clothes and accessories on and did not like the end result. The coat did not match the rest of the outfit. I liked the skirt and top on their own, but together with the coat, they were not working. Because I had spent more time on the coat and I liked it a bit more, I decided that the skirt and top needed to go. I made a new pattern and cut out a more voluminous skirt to go with the coat. I added a waistband and right after I realized why I didn't like the outfit before. The faux suede fabric I was using just didn't go with the metallic fabric of the coat. I switched to using this gold lame instead. It was awful to work with, but fit the doll much better, so I was willing to suffer through it. These jump rings will make sense later on. I played around with the straps for a while before I had something I was happy about. 
To get this contraption of a dress to stay on, I added two snap buttons that hid underneath the skirt layer. I still had the other earring, so I thought I might as well use it on this doll. I think it works well enough adding some interest to the bottom half. And with that, she is done. I do have to admit that she was a bit more difficult to create. And I'm not 100% content with how she ended up looking. I think I should have used a different head for her. Claudine's face is very sweet and I'm not an excellent repainter who can just work completely outside of the face mold. She is not as wise and mysterious as I envisioned in my head, but I was able to create a totally different body type for her that will make her stand out from the group as a leader and a bit of a matriarch character. Darker skin tones have really been inspiring me lately, and she is the fourth character in this series who has dark skin. I'm really proud that I'm able to add representation, instead of just including one who has darker skin, because I have four now, and they are all different shades. My moon goddess being the darkest, and the sun being the lightest one out of the bunch but I do think I need to explore some unnatural skin tones next, so that my Earth doll does not end up as the only one with green skin. Leave me suggestions in the comments about the remaining dolls. Saturn is next in the series, and I have been very excited about Saturn right from the beginning of the series. Thank you all so much for watching. Leave me a comment if you haven't yet done so. I would love to know what you think of Jupiter. Until next time, bye!